everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're so happy to have you. We have the charming and brilliant Marley Bird with us today, and we're going to be learning all about corner to corner crochet, working off this really nice pattern um, for the Bernat Geometric C2C blanket. My name is Renee L from Yarnspirations, and I'm here to help with any questions you might have during today's class. So please feel free to drop them in the chat. We'll make sure that Marley answers them. And while we're getting ready to kick things off, let us know where you're watching from. Let us know if you're a beginner with C2C, if you've you know, maybe done a bit of it before and just tell us your stories. Uh, over to you, Marley. Awesome. Hey, everybody, how are you? Uh, nice to see a lot of familiar faces. Um, as they've said, my name is Marley Bird. I'm a YouTube content creator and ambassador for Yarnspirations as well as the owner of MarleyBird.com. I am a knitter and a crocheter, which is what I call affectionately by crafty. So I love to knit and crochet. And those of you who are knitters and crocheters, you know that there are some things that are quintessential knitting or quintessential crochet. Uh, off the top of my head, I think of mitered squares as quintessential knitting. And I think of granny squares as quintessential crochet. And corner to corner is another one of those things that over the last probably like 10 years has become a very big staple in the crochet community. It's a, one of those items that it, um, because of its biased nature of construction, it just feels like it's just so much more interesting to start making it. And it, it feels like you get you get pretty far along really quickly because you, know, you have just a few squares you're building into. Then when you get to the meat of whatever you're making, obviously it's kind of a long slog because you have quite a few scares, squares going back and forth, but then you decrease down. It just, there's something about it that's very appealing. Well, the great thing about corner to corner is not only can you do it with just a basic solid color yarn, you could do it with a striped yarn, you could do it with a variegated yarn. You could also do it with two different colors of yarn, three different colors of yarn and create different uh, motifs, for lack of a better word, different um, designs in the actual fabric. And so this piece today, the geometric corner to corner crochet blanket, Renee has went ahead and put a link in the chat so you can follow along with the pattern yourself and then continue on with it after the class, because obviously we will not be going through the um, whole thing today. But um, it, it is super cute. It uses just a couple colors two colors really for the main body of the blanket and then the one extra color for the the edging of the blanket and it doesn't use that much you guys it uses um so you have three different colors right so you have two balls of the white of this one ball of the green and one ball of the purple so it's just four balls of yarn and it really isn't that much yarn at all and you get a really good looking stitch so my goal today is to teach you essentially the basics of corner to corner show you how to change colors. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about how you um, will work out until you aren't gonna increase anymore and then how you're gonna decrease down so you can get a nice square. All right, so those are the things I wanna try and get through today. We are going to use, I'm gonna use the Burnett blanket and then the pattern calls for a size L crochet hook, which is an eight millimeter, uh, which is right here. I'm actually gonna jump up a size to an M, which is a nine millimeter, not much of a difference. It does make the stitches a little bit bigger though. And I think they're easier for you to see. So that's why I'm jumping up a size. But I will tell you that when I make baby blankets, I prefer to have them a little bit more tight. Like I like the stitches a little tighter, uh, less likely for the little fingers to get caught in there and get tangled and like lose circulation and stuff. You don't want that. Um, so using a smaller hook is always better. And something that is not on the materials list, but those of you who have taken classes with me, this is gonna be no surprise to you. Um, I'm highly going to recommend a uh, at least one stitch marker, if not a couple, as I just, I throw them everywhere, um, but a couple of stitch markers, a couple of locking stitch markers. They're gonna help you um, with the orientation of where you are with the pattern. Cause I have a really hard time keeping track of what's the right side and wrong side as we first get started. And uh, so hopefully that will give you a hand. All right, so if you have all your materials, let's go ahead, jump on down here. We're going to start off with some, some paper here to start, okay? So let me just go make sure that everything's clicked there. All right, so corner to corner, pretty basic. What we will do is we will start in one corner with a square, right? Let me grab another marker. And then once we get that first square done, we will turn our work, right? We'll turn our work and we will create the next square. So we will create one right here and then we will create one right here. And then you turn your work, you create one right here, you create one right here, 
you create one right there, okay? So what will happen is as we're starting off with this section of our blanket, we're gonna be increasing, all right? So we're gonna be increasing, meaning we're gonna increase the number of squares we have each time we go around the diagonal. Does that make sense? So on the next one, if the previous was four, right? This one, or no, the previous was three, we will have four on this one. And the previous was four, we'll have five on this one. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So you would keep going here until the pattern tells you to get to the specified number of how many you're supposed to get to, okay? And I haven't looked at this one to see if like, sometimes you get to this number and then you maintain it once, meaning you, how do you say it? Like you can get it to where we maintain it. So we have the same number, you see that? So this one, we had one, two, three, four, five, six. And then when we did the green, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. This is, if we wanted to keep it going like a big rectangle, you would maintain that number for a while until you got to where this length was as long as you wanted it. You guys with me so far? And then, then you start decreasing down, okay? But let's pretend that we didn't increase one more, but we no longer wanted to, to make it longer. Like this is as wide as we want it to be diagonally, all right? If that was the case, we no longer increase out here. Like you'll see, we're missing that one out here. And we're essentially going to fill in the spaces between the squares, but we are not gonna increase at the edges, okay? Because now we're as wide as we want it, right? So you keep going. This one, once again, we don't increase down here at the edge. We're just filling in the inside. We do not increase out there. Do you see what I'm saying here? So what you really do is just imagine, imagine if these were like post-it notes and you started going out, you're like, oh, that's as wide as I want it. Now we're gonna just fill it in and go back in. And we just do that with a series of stitches. Now for this pattern, we use double crochets. You can do it with um, half double crochets. I have a lot of patterns out on the Yarnspirations website where I've done them with half double crochets. Um, and you know, you could do whatever you want. Now, obviously I use two, two different colors here so you could easily see the lines and going back and forth like this, but you could do all of this in one color, okay? You could do all this in one color. So here's our first, here's our second, here's our third, here's our fourth, or you can do it in multiple colors to where you start to create a pattern where, um, think of it as like a pixelated pattern. You can make each uh, individual like cube or square or, whatever you wanna call that, its own color. And so if you do that, you're gonna have a lot of strands to, or ends to weave in later because you only use that color in this little bit and you treat it like an intarsia type technique. So you're gonna wind off some yarn and just use it for that little section, but it's possible to do that. And you can do some really fun things with that. That's what this pattern does. All right, everybody with me so far, give me a thumbs up on your, on your thing, if you don't mind, just to make sure. And if I, if something I said is confusing, please let us know in the chat. Maybe I can explain it, ex explain it, explain it a little bit better. <laughs> right, so I Martha, see a lot before of we, uh, before we get started for left-handers, would they yes. follow the pattern in the reverse? So it's, you can still follow the pattern like we are. It's just the, the right-handed right side will be your wrong side. Does that make sense? So you can follow it the same way. It'll just be the right side and wrong side will be opposite. Does that make sense? And the great thing is there's a chart on this too. So if you follow the chart, that will be very helpful. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, so here we go, ladies and gentlemen, we will start off with a chain six, okay? So you guys, I'm assuming know how to do a chain stitch. So I'm not gonna take extra time showing how to do that. I can't even make a chain stitch. I can't even do a slip knot here today. Feels like it's a Monday. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so I know it's hard to see the chains with this blanket yarn, but I'm telling you guys, if you use the blanket yarn and you kind of, you feel along here, you'll be able to feel your chains and you'll be able to see them close, like as you're looking at your own. 
Um, as you use the blanket yarn though, <laughs> your work goes really fast. So if you're looking for that last minute baby shower gift, this is the one y'all. All right, I'm gonna yarn over my hook and I'm going to go into the fourth chain from hook. So I'm gonna look here. So there's the top of one chain. It's the top of the second chain. Here's the top of the third. So here's the top of the fourth. And I can go into either the top of the chain through the, I go through the center of the chain actually is usually what I end up doing. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Okay. Now that leaves us with two more chains here to work into, which is exactly what we're going to do with two more double crochets. So there's one and there's two. Okay. So here's where your stitch marker is going to come in to play. All right, you guys know me, I am a big person that I need, I need visuals. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker and before I turn my work, I'm just gonna stick my stitch marker into one of those stitches. I don't care what one. Now that stitch marker to me, I'm right-handed, that signifies that this is the right side. So whenever I am on a um, odd numbered row, as I'm working down my odd numbered row, I wanna make sure I can see this stitch marker. Okay, um, even left-handed people, you can think of it as that same way. Every time you're working down an odd number row, you wanna make sure you see that stitch marker. When you're working down an even number row, you will not see that stitch marker. And you're gonna see what I mean here in just a second. And this is why I add it. Um, you can turn your work and chain six or chain six and turn, it does not matter. But at this point, we're gonna chain six. And this is where we are starting to build our next square, right? So this is going to increase. Anytime you start with this chain six, we will be increasing the number of squares we have. All right, you guys ready? All right, so this is where I was. I've now turned my works. Yeah, I no longer can see my stitch marker. So that helps me with orientation of where this is. Because down here, this looks like this just looks like a blob. Like it doesn't look like anything much, right? But we're gonna start here just like we did before by placing a double crochet in the fourth chain from hook. So go to the fourth chain from hook and place a double crochet. So one, do a double crochet in the next chain. Two. And then the following chain. You get it in here and three. Okay. Now at this point, it is very easy for this thing to get flipped around and look like that. Can you see that? It's very easy for it to go like this. It's very easy to be like this. And so if you don't have that marker right there, you can quickly get disoriented of where you are in your fabric. Do you, you guys see what I mean here? So the first time I ever did this, that's exactly what happened to me. And what was supposed to be like a square ended up like this, like hexagon looking thing. Cause I was all over the place. All right. So when I tell you to use the stitch marker, it's cause I have to use it too. So I can set this down and I can say, okay, there's, there's a square, but this looks, this looks funny. This doesn't look like this thing here, like Marley showed, right? Like right here, this looks like it's like way out here. What's happening? Well, here's what happens. We're gonna end up doing a slip stitch over here into this chain three space that we skipped. And when we do that, it's going to bring this square up to where we want it to be. So watch, we're gonna come up here and do a slip stitch into that whole space. It's just a big old space. You do a slip stitch there. Now, this would be our orange square on the little diagram we did. Here's our original, here's our orange one. Now we have to build a second orange one right here. And we will build it by chaining three and then placing three double crochets all around that chain three. So we don't go into a stitch, we don't go into the chains, we don't do anything. We just go right around that big old chain there that big we go in that space makes it very easy 
Okay. And this is where I was saying, like, if you're, if your stitches are tighter and you make these chains, like the chains that we just went around, if we made those a little bit smaller and tighter, this resulting hole right there from creating these stitches would actually be smaller. So it wouldn't be as pronounced, but like I said, I'm using a bigger hook because it just makes the stitches a little bit bigger, bigger and easier for me to show you. But now looking at this, can you see how this is this? Like right here. So this here is this, that is that, that is that. You with me? Okay. Awesome. Okay. So here's the cool thing. So now we're going to the next row, which is our third row. So we're going to read our chart or our directions back this way. All right. So this first one, let me see here if we can, let me do a different marker. So this was block number one. This was our block number two. And we went this way. This will be our section three, and we're gonna read it this way. Then this will be our four, and we'll read it this way. This will be five, and we read it this way. You guys see that? It likes, it's like we snake around just like this, okay? So when we go to our third row, we're gonna be increasing our stitches again, because we don't. this isn't just how big we want our thing to be. We don't want it to just be this wide. So we're gonna increase with another square here. So we start off with the chain six and we'll build our first square there, just like we did this one. And then we'll join it with a slip stitch right here, which will actually be like right there around that chain three, it'll be right there. We'll build chain three or uh, double crochets right here and then join with a, a slip stitch right there, which will fill in this blank, okay? It's gonna look really good. Y'all with me so far? All right, so we're gonna do the third row. And this is where you will begin to see, again, the stitch marker will be visible to us because we have it on our third row. All right, so we're gonna chain six. You can turn, all right, so now here's our stitch marker, it's apparent. One, two, three, fourth chain from our hook. We'll do a double and a double into the next chain and then a double into the next chain. Once again, this is where it can seem a little confusing. You're like, why do I have this outlier here? But once we do our slip stitch over here into this chain three space, what that's gonna do is it brings that square up and in line with the other squares, all right? So I'm gonna come over here to this chain three space, go into the space, do a slip stitch. Now this is in line. I'm gonna chain three, and then I'll do three double crochets all into that space, and I will join with a slip stitch over here, okay? So here we go, we'll chain three. So I set this down. You can see the squares filled in, but now we have to join it over here. Otherwise it's just kind of flopping around, right? So we go into that chain three, work our slip stitch. Now, if we wanted something where it was only this tall, we would stop here and we would just continue on. We would slip stitches over to here so we could fill in this and then grow one down here. But we want ours to continue to grow like um, for a square. So we're gonna put another square up here and that's in the instructions. So we will chain three, just like before. And three double crochets all around that chain three. And voila, you guys see that? All right, now if you're looking at the pattern, you're gonna notice on page two, there is a color chart, all right? 
So if we imagine that right now, let's imagine the green I'm using is the white represented in the chart, okay? We're gonna pretend the green is represented the white in the chart because white against white on this showing you in a video does not work very well. So that's why I went with green. So, so far we have completed row three with the, the correct color, but you can see on row four, it changes colors, right? It changes colors for all four of those squares. So what you would do now, if you were following the chart, you would be doing, um, we have to change colors on this last draw through here. And then we continue on again, increasing our square count. So we no longer have three, we'll have four, but we will be using the other color. Okay, you guys with me on that so far? All right. You guys are getting like a crash course in, in corner to corner and changing colors and doing all the things. All right, so I, I am a big believer in not crocheting over ends. So I always cut my ends long enough to where I can, I can really weave them in later on. So I always cut my end with a nice long tail. And on this one up here, before I go to the next row, because I know the next row, I'm gonna have to change colors or even if it was the next square to change colors, this is where you wanna get. You wanna to get to where you have two loops on your hook, just like you would do if you change colors any other time, right? Now let me cut this one. Now this one I pulled from the outside, so it's gonna roll around a little bit on me. Just let me get some, let me get some uh, slack here. Now up here, you will yarn over with your new color and pull through. Now, if you change colors in this way, what that does, it allows the stitch itself below your new color, not get interrupted with your new color, but your new color is on your hook. So it's ready to go as you continue on, all right? So as we do row four blocks, our, our row four blocks, we will go ahead, we're gonna do our increase blocks. So we're gonna do our six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I did seven. You have seven. Now I'm gonna skip three, one, two, three. And in the fourth one, I'm gonna do a double crochet. So one, two, three. In the fourth, I'll do a double. I can turn my work at this point too. I'm on an even row, so I don't wanna see my stitch marker. So there's one. Here's two. And then here's three. Okay. Once again, I don't know, does this help you guys to see where it looks like it's like, oh, this is weird. It's all the way out here. What needs to happen? Okay, good, because it helped me when I, because this is literally how I talk to myself, you guys, when I'm working through patterns, I'm like, what the heck is that? And I have to be like, okay, let's work through this. All right, so I finished my block and then I had to remind myself, okay, in order for my block to get connected to the actual fabric, I need to slip stitch it over here into the chain three. Every block you make, all these chain threes, those are what you're going to be working around to create the future blocks. So like we skipped these chain threes, those are what we're gonna work around to make future blocks. Here's chain threes we skipped, here's chain threes we skipped. Do you guys see what I mean? So when I come up here, look, once I do this slip stitch, this is gonna put this in line with my whole project, which is great. So right here, I can do my slip stitch. And now, it's a matter of building the blocks to fill in these gaps. So I'm gonna build a block here, build a block here, and I'm supposed to build a block up here. And we do each of those the same way. And conveniently, we do each of those with this same color. So we didn't have to wind off just enough color to just do one block. We're able to use it down this whole row. All right, so I'm gonna to continue to do that. I'm gonna ask uh, Renee if there are any questions, because I've, been trying to make sure I get through all of this for all of you. So I know that we can do the replay here, but I know there has to be some questions. So Renee, if you wanna pop in as I'm just crocheting these blocks. Absolutely. So we're probably gonna go back a few rows. 
Okay. Um, so folks are trying to wrap their heads around, which is understandable. This is different I, technique. Yep. Um, so Pixie Lee had asked where you did that first slip stitch. Now, I believe that was row two, right? Second row? Yes. So row two, it was right here where the chain three was. So the very first block we did, we chained six. And then we did a double in the fourth chain, a double in the fifth chain, and a double in the sixth chain. And when we did that, it left those first three chains exposed, right? So then when we created the next square, we chained six. Once again, you skipped three, and then you did a double, double, double. So these three right here were skipped. And then you needed to join with the slip stitch over here to this initial chain three that you skipped on the very first block. So even it'd be like, if this were the first block and this were the, the second block we just did, it's right here. You slip stitch right there. And it's just into that big space. You don't go into any, anything special. It's just a big old space. And that's consistent throughout. So all of these, you'll notice I'm through that big space. Hopefully that helps. Awesome. And I'm just going to throw to Ashley really quickly. Um, so they said, to clarify, you only double crochet stitches in a stitch. When you work the six chains, all the rest yes. of the stitches go in spaces. Yep. Yep. Okay. Unless a pattern tells you otherwise, yes, you make it make it really easy on yourself. Just put it in that big space. I mean, yeah, there are three chains there that technically, if you wanted to go into each of those chains, you could. But if you do that, then what I call the butt of the stitch, and y'all know what I'm talking about, it's the it's the part that kind of hangs down underneath where you actually go into a chain is going to be visible in there. And so it just makes it much more nice, clean, and crisp. And here's what I mean. So like if I go into the chain and I create a double crochet instead of around the space, can you see the difference? Here's around the space. Here's in the chain. You see how that down there just hangs out? That's the butt of the stitch. That's what I call it, it's the butt of the stitch. So if you go into the chain, you're gonna let your butt hang out and you're not gonna have a nice, crisp, clean color change. So it's much better to go into the space and work completely around those chains so that you get a nice clean color change. See the difference there? And then right here, going back to the lady who asked at the start, where you just, where do you slip stitch? Pretend this is our second one we did. This is the first one we did. We have those chains right there. Just go into that space where the chains are, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that through the loop on your hook. And then you continue on with your next square if that's what you're supposed to do awesome um so valerie had asked can you do another row with a new color i think that's kind of what we're doing now yeah i knew what? that that would be helpful i i knew that having the same color on these was going to be a little tricky but i also wanted to be true to the pattern a little bit so you guys could kind of see so like, it's like we got you started, you know what I mean? With the blanket, if you wanted to make the blanket. Awesome. And then, sorry, I'm going to do one more question You're okay. for, for this session. Then we can walk back in. Um, there was a question. What stitches does block include? Block in quotation marks. The block. So this is what I'm going to count as a block. I count this as a block and it's a double, a double, a double and a chain three. I count that as a block. And just remember, every time you do your next row of blocks, they're built on this or around those chain threes until we start shaping back in, then things get changed up a little bit. But for the most part, that's how this goes. Are we good? Yeah, I think we're good for now. All right. Okay, so going back and looking at page two, you guys, you'll notice that on, um, Number five, obviously we're gonna have our right, the other side facing, so the side with our marker is gonna be facing. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it right now. So if I'm reading number five on the color chart where it's the blocks with the color, I can see that same color as what this last color was here. But then all of my squares down the row until I get down here, all of these go back to this color. So I'm gonna have one square that's purple, then I'm gonna have a green, a green, a green, and then a purple. So this is where 
we're going to do our one square that's purple. We're going to change to our green in the, the, the last double crochet we do, or we could even change it in the slip stitch. And then we'll cut our purple, go to green. So we'll do green, green, green. Then we'll cut our green and go back to purple. And then, <laughs> and then on six, it goes green and then purple and then green and then purple and then green. And then, so you're going to have one color for each block is going to be its own color. And that's where for those you you're just, you're going to be cutting your yarn each time. Okay. I know it's a pain. Um, just so you guys know, whenever you're doing color work like this, you're going to have lots of ends. And I will tell you right now, when you're putting that much work in a project like this, take the time to actually weave in your ends really nice and tidy and do not wait till the end do it as you go and if you guys want to see an example of what it's like when you wait to the end on youtube i have a video for the snowflake corner to corner afghan just go watch that video you'll see like i show the back of my my blanket and you're going to see it looks like a shag rug like it's crazy so definitely want to weave in your ends as you go just learn from my mistake okay all right, so I've got to come back over here because if you haven't noticed, I like to chain before I turn. So I'm going to chain six. It's just a personal preference for me. So I chain six and then I turn. So this one square is the only one that's going to be purple for me. So I will skip one, two, three, and then go into the chains. So I have three double crochets into these chains. There's one. two and three. Now here's where we have to make a decision. Do I change colors here and have it so that the slip stitch is the new color, like the new color on my loop here, or can I just put my hook in here now, cut my yarn again, I always leave a long tail, just buy yourself enough yarn so that your tail size doesn't matter. You won't run out. Like it won't, Nothing worse than having tails that you can't weave in. I hate that so much. So right here, pull up and then pull through. I think that's perfectly fine right there. Cause you're, we're changing at a slip stitch. So I think we can change right there. If you're, if you're changing at a different point I would change before you finish that double crochet. All right. So here, I'm gonna show you guys again, one more time. If you wanted to change back here, we could where you got to the last two loops on your hook. Change. And then, so now I have green on my hook. And when I do my slip stitch, you can see how the green, see how it sort of bleeds from the purple over to where we're getting ready to start. Depending on how picky you're gonna be, you decide what you want. I, I don't like that. So the other option, I don't like the color bleeds or my butt hanging out. Can you tell? Um, the other option is to finish the double. And when you come over here, change colors on your slip stitch. That just looks, that looks cleaner to me. And then you would carry on here now with the green for three blocks. Now, I know you guys are going to be tempted to just hold this all on here. Now you're going to be tempted to hold this right around that chain three and just crochet around it, right? You'd be like, what's the problem? She doesn't know what she's talking about. It's gonna hold just fine. Every time I crochet over my ends, it looks great. All right, so I'm here to tell you as a mom of three kids who got many corner to corner blankets where my friends thought the exact same thing. And even they, they would do this and they would go back just a little bit from there. Um, the minute I washed it, those ends started popping out and I felt awful because they had put all of that work into these beautiful blankets and then at the end, they just looked awful because all of the ends were coming undone. So if you're going to put all of that work into an item, you guys, gosh, don't cut corners. Just take the time to weave in your ends, please, 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 please. And that's the, that's it. That's all I'm going to say on my soapbox. I'm that person. I do not agree with crocheting over your ends at all. <laughs> all right. So there's that. I'm going to. So I did a slip stitch. I'm going to chain three, make my block over here. That's what I call them. I don't know if the pattern actually calls them blocks. That's what I call these are blocks. It's like a row of blocks. 
just makes sense to me. Yeah, it's consistent. I think it was blocks in the pattern too. Mm -hmm. All right, so right here we have a choice again. Do we change colors before or after? I'm gonna stay consistent. Um, I see a question there. Somebody's asking, does cutting your yarn so many times weaken the blanket? Not, uh, not if you weave in your ends. Not if you're weaving your ends appropriately. You know what I mean? Like you can bury your ends, you can weave in your ends. Um, <laughs> again, I don't agree with uh, putting knots in projects either. Like I'm that person. Um, so I don't put knots in my my projects. Uh, everything looks great. And if you if you know what intarsia is. Um, you can have a lot of different ends in, in tarja and knitting where you have to, you actually have to twist your yarn around each other as you switch colors. In crochet, you really don't have to do that. Um, and there, I mean, there's different types of color work in crochet. There's definitely in tarja crochet where you do crochet over the color that you're not using until it's time to use it again. Like that's a completely different thing than what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about crocheting over your end for crocheting over your end sake. So like for this example, if somebody crocheted over their end like this, they're like, oh, that's good. It's locked in. And then they snip it cut and they're done. That's never going to stay. That's just never going to stay there. Okay. Got to the end here. And here we are. How are we feeling? We already have a lot of ends. <laughs> it's fun, right? It's not for the faint of heart. We're getting a lot of questions about how do we weave in the ends? Okay. So with the burnout blanket, it's a little bit tricky because the yarn is so thick. So burnout blanket is one of those ones that I just really make sure um, I go back and forth a couple different ways, not only along the stitches, but along um, like the, the post of the stitch. So I'm going to show you. So if this is my right side, I'm gonna weave in all of my tails on the wrong side. So let's just take a minute here and talk about how to do that. So I'm gonna grab this purple one to begin with. And I'm using a bent tip tapestry needle with a large eye here, okay? So with the burnout blanket, you have a couple options. If you struggle with getting this into your piece here, you can see that as you cut the yarn, you can pull away the fluff and you can see how the yarn kind of comes out. So you could pull it away a little bit if you want to, to try and get things a little bit, um, like get that core in if you need to. I usually don't need to. I'm usually pretty good just getting things in. And right here, I like to go down the actual post of my stitch. So you see, I'm kind of like weaving in and out of the post. I'm going to come down and I pull it to where it's not, look, I don't want it to cinch up like that, right? That's not what I want. I want it to be comfortable where you can't see it. It looks good. That's great. I would actually come around and then come back up the same post. For me, if this were, if this were mine, I would probably pop over and I would do it in the next one too. Cause it's not making it super thick. Like I'm, I can feel my fingers here and it's not like, oh my gosh, what is that? There's like a knot in the, the fabric or anything. It's, it's, that's not happening. I can come back up. Now let's play with something here. You can see here, this is the core. You see that nylon there? That's the core of the piece. So I don't do this, but I do have friends that do this, that they'll get to this point and they'll continue to pull off. Like if it's something they're really worried about, they'll continue to pull off to where they get just that core, this piece, and then they will knot it around here like with a surgical knot, so it's hidden and they do that. Now, I think that's a little overkill, so I don't do that, but it's an option out there. I've seen it done um, if you guys are interested in doing that at all. But I try and make it, especially if there's gonna be an edging on the piece, I try and make it where if I'm on the edge like this, I try and make it to where the end is all the way, like it finishes back towards the edge. Does that make sense? Just trying to make sure it's in as much as I possibly can. And for me, I don't nip these until I'm completely done and I've washed the whole thing to kind of see how things are. So I don't, I don't nip those when I'm doing uh, the burnout blanket. Does that help? Did that help at all, anybody? Here's the one. So. 
Victoria said one. looks good. Okay. I mean, it, it looks really good. I could, I mean, I could, this is just a little swatch here. I could just nip it. These are terrible scissors. But it's all just kind of popped in there. I mean, the goal is that you don't want that to come undone, right? With wear and tear. So you're hoping that it stays nice and tight, which is why my friends like to use that core, that nylon core, and then tie it around so that it stays really snug. But I mean, like I said, I feel like that's overkill. That's just what they do though. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Um, Shannon asked, do you ever carry the colors slash yarn when you do C to C? Ah, you can. So actually that's what I was going to do on this next one. So you could see what it looks like, and then you can make the decision if you want to do that. So let's take a peek. Let's get back to the pattern here real quick. And on the pattern on row six, so we're going to turn our work. You guys understand just really quickly. I don't think I even said this out loud. The chart that we're looking at where you can see the arrow and it's pointing like this, you're, you're viewing the chart as if you're looking at the right side of your fabric. So um, when I turn my work, I'm going to still, even though I'm turning my work like this and I'm over here on the right side, I'm going to read my chart from the top where that number six is and read it down, even though I'm over here on my actual project. Okay. I just want to make sure you guys understand how that works, but just to try and make things a little bit clear, let's do this. So I'm going to keep this on the right side as if we're doing row six coming down this way. So you can see on row six, we have a white block. I got to like do this. So white, 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 white. Oh, so row six is all white. It's row seven where it changes. All right. So let me get down row six with all my green and then row seven, we're going to change colors. Uh, yeah, I have plenty of time. All right. So I've got to change colors here. And I'm at the end here, right? So I don't have a slip stitch to go into. So I am going to change colors with the two loops on my hook. And now you guys get to talk amongst yourselves again. <laughs> so um, somebody is asking to make sure how to decrease. <coughs> Give me a second. Um, let me, I will try my best to get to that part because I know that that is an important factor. One, two, three, four, five, six. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course, now that I'm going fast, like I'm, I feel like I'm like super slow. One, there we go. <clears throat> All right, Renee, talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I'm just going through some <coughs> of the previous questions. Oh, this is a good question. Dee asked, what other kind of yarn would you use for a C2C project? Oh, that's a good question. I, I mean, I've used any yarn. I've used, I mean, I shouldn't say any yarn. I would say any smooth yarn, and you might be thinking, well, you're using brunette blanket, which is nice and fluffy, but it's still a smooth yarn. You know what I mean? It's not like an eyelash yarn. It's still a smooth yarn. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? It doesn't have like a bunch of nubbies to it or anything. Not that you couldn't make it with a yarn that has nubbies, but personally, like I've made stuff with Super Saver. I've made stuff with With Love. I've made stuff with um, Chic Sheep. I've made stuff with Blanket. Um, yeah, just, just anything. I mean, you know, what's really fun to do you guys is pick a yarn. Now, what did I just do here? You see what I did? I did a slip stitch chain three. Okay. Yeah. I'm still on. Okay. It didn't look right. Right. It didn't look right. Um, you could choose a yarn that's a solid and then have another yarn that's the stripes. And then every, every, like every wrong side, use the solid, every right side, use the stripes or vice versa. And you could get some sort of a really cool look there too. Just change things up um, or get one long color changing yarn. And as you're working through the project, you'll get a, a really cool look. There's a lot of different things you could do with this. The amount of time it takes to work up a corner to corner totally depends on 
one, how fast you are. And then two, how much time you dedicate to it. You know what I mean? Uh, for me, if I were doing something, I could probably finish this particular blanket. I could probably do it probably in a weekend, just with a, a, a normal amount of time working on it. Uh, I think I'll probably have more time weaving in the ends than the actual crochet. <laughs> Half the time, that's how it feels um, when you're doing any sort of color work project like this, but it's so beautiful when it's all done. But like I said at the start, there's something about the construction of a corner to corner that makes it seem like it goes very fast. So it's, it's a fun thing to do. All right, so I, I did seven. So now, or that we did six, we're gonna look at seven. And then once we get through seven, I'm gonna work the decrease, okay? So I'm gonna get through this. So seven, we have white, and then we have purple, and then we have white, and then we have purple. We have white, we have purple, we have white. So let's see how we would how we could do this where we didn't have to cut. Let's play with this together because I always cut. I'm not like readily sure how to do this. I always cut. So we're gonna play with this. Let's see if we can. I know you can because my friend um, Repeat Crafter Me does it quite often. One, two, three. That's one, two, three. One, two, three. Now let's see here how we would do this because here's, here's the nature of this. We'd have to come up here and this is where we're changing colors, right? This is where we're changing colors and then we're chaining three. So let's see here. Let's let's drop our other color without cut it, cutting it. And let's see where it ends up. So we can see how we could carry it, if at all possible. Sorry, like I said, I pulled from the outside of this big purple one. So it wants to roll around. There's one. Two. And three. And this is where we'd come up here. And this is where we would need the other yarn, but it's way over here. You see how it's way over there. So how do you get it to where it's up here ready for you? So one thing you could do, we could crochet over this and then just carry it up to where you just have a strand of yarn there. Let's see what that looks like. Like that's an option for us. So let's see. So we want to make sure we carry it up on the wrong side. So let's play with this. And when I say carry it up, I mean, we want to work around it. So I'm going to work around it over here. Let's see how it looks and just play with this. There's one. There's two. And then this would be three. And then this is where I need to, to grab it again. So I need this up here, right? I'm gonna bring it here. Do I care? I mean, it's a little bit there. Uh, you know, part of me is like, maybe if it were thinner yarn and these were closer together, like if they were really tightly crocheted, it probably wouldn't matter much. Um, it, it bothers me, like I wouldn't do it. <coughs> I'm curious what you guys think. I mean, if this, mm, you see, I'm like thinking really in my head what, what I would do, would I, would I do that? I probably would not do that. I, I don't like it, especially on a baby blanket. That's, that's too, the chances of a little tiny finger getting caught in there and then having circulation cut off is just too much for me. So for me, I would not do that, but you could do it. I mean, the other option here, if you want to like get serious with it, you could come into the side of these and just kind of slip stitch your way up with the green. so that it's up here and waiting for you. So that way when you're here, you could come in and get your green 
can come out. Now, now your green is no longer, you don't have the strand. And all you did there, like, that's a good option. You guys, did you see what I did? I crocheted over my, my other color here. And then I just slip stitched it up the side and then you could join it there. That's exactly what you could do that. Now I would do that. That's an option. It definitely looks better and it's safer for little babies. So you could do that. That one's ready. Um, let me show you that one more time. So for this one, uh, I will crochet over the purple. Hey, it cuts down on the amount of ends too. That's a beautiful thing. And this, I mean, it's really, it works well if the color is definitely next, but it would still work if you needed the color down a, a, a ways, right? Um, as long as the color you're slip stitching up is the same color, right? Because if not, it's going to show up. So like right here, look at this, this color, I'm going to slip stitch up here. Well, now this is the right side. I could slip stitch just up the back loop. Let's try that. I'm going to just try it and slip stitch up the back loop just to see what it looks like. And then that puts me right where I need you. This is a little bit more advanced than what you guys are probably signed up for, but hey, if it makes it so you don't have more ends, might be a good option. So that one, the purple is hidden a little bit more because I put it in the back, you know? It's not super, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, right? I mean, it's there. It's definitely more visible on the back side, but I mean, the back side's gonna have that anyways. It's not a bad option. It's not a bad option. Are right, you guys, you guys cool with that? Yeah, give me a thumbs up. Cause I have five minutes left. I wanna make sure you can see how you would decrease in, okay? All right, so I'm gonna undo all this real quick because I'm gonna, it, rather than finishing this row, it makes more sense to just go back to where we were. And we're gonna pretend that instead of increasing, let's get the purple out of here, maybe. All right. Okay, so you're at the end of this row. Let's say it's time to start going in. Okay, I'm gonna look and see how they, what they tell you. Da, 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 da. Just wanna make sure. So you would completely keep increasing, okay, until you get 29 blocks. And then it says on the 30th block, this is where things change, okay? So the 30th block says the 30th block, you're gonna slip stitch into each of the first three double crochets. So we've turned our work and a 30th, obviously we would be on the, the we would not be on our right side, we'd be on a wrong side, but I'm saying we're gonna start here cause I have this here, all right guys, this is where we are. So you would slip stitch in the top of these double crochets in this block, very similar to what we just did when we were changing colors, all right? So we slip stitch in the top three, and that says block in the next chain three space. So essentially we've moved our yarn up along here and then we're gonna come over here, do our slip stitch into there and create our block. So we chain three, do our doubles all into that chain three space. You see that? So we're, what we're saying here is that this is as wide as I want this to be. So notice I didn't increase out here. I didn't do a chain six and build another block out here. We slip stitched up so that we could get our yarn right here. And word to the wise, if, you're, if your next color here is like purple, you could cut your yarn here and rejoin your purple up here with a slip stitch. You know what I mean? You don't have to bring it up. Do you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, but then we keep going. So we fill it in, fill it in, fill it in, fill it in, fill it in. When we get down here, instead of building another block down here, you join with the slip stitch and that's the end of your, your row. Okay, so you don't build another block down here 
and you don't build another block down here when we're making just a basic square. If we were making a rectangle, we stopped building here and you could keep building over here and we would keep having a rectangle until it was to the point that we wanted it to cut in. Does that make sense, you guys? All right, and like I said, you can do this with double crochets, half double crochets. Um, I've seen it done with like shell stitches. I don't know how that's done. I don't do I don't do that very well, but you could do it with all of that stuff. So that being said, like, I mean, there's a there's a lot of information packed into this. But if you want something a little bit more detail oriented, more in depth, like I do have some corner to corner videos on my YouTube channel, um, you can check out. Um, I've done several patterns for yarn inspirations using the Red Heart yarns, um, but that's basically it, you guys. How you feeling? You can go back to my face. How are we feeling? A little shaky, a little scared, a little intimidated. Here's the cool thing. For me, guys, the first time I attempted corner to corner, this is kind of ironic because I am a designer, but geometry was a really hard subject for me, which is crazy because now I'm using like Pythagorean theorem every single day of my life. Um, but geometry in school was very difficult. And to me, this is very geometric. It's very building blocks, turning, and it was hard for me to grasp my head around it. And it wasn't until I usually got to the fifth row of blocks that it started to kind of like click in my head of, oh, I see what's happening now. And honestly, it wasn't until about my fifth overall blanket before it really clicked and I didn't have to go back and relearn each time how to do this. So all of that is to say, even as a professional who's been doing this stuff for years and years, it's okay if you guys struggle with this a little bit at the start, it, it's just sticks and string y'all. It will be okay. It's okay to get a little bit frustrated and give yourself some patience and time. You will get this. Like the minute it clicks, you're gonna be like, Oh my gosh, I totally see it now. And it, and it just give yourself a chance to do that. It might that it might be that it takes you three or four times of giving it a try before it does that. And that's okay. So that's totally all right. All right. Uh, if you work on this project or any other corner to corner project, I would love to see that. If you use hashtag Marley Bird on uh, in social media, um, that's usually that I follow that hashtag so I can see your stuff. So if you ever want to get my attention, you can always hashtag Marley Bird or even at the Marley Bird on Instagram. But then also Yarn Inspirations and Michaels both like to see your items too. So if you use hashtag Yarnspo or hashtag Make It With Michaels, they'll look at your work also. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this class. I know I was moving along at a pretty good tick, but I wanted to make sure I got all the information in. Just remember, you can rewatch this over on the Michaels YouTube channel or on the classes page on the Michaels website. Um, but that's it for me, you guys. All right, Renee, it's up to you. Cool. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us today. Don't forget to share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag yarnspo. And as Marley mentioned, just a reminder, you can find more classes on michaels.com and a recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. And that's all good for me. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.